score, but they are ready to start in Minneapolis, the Cyclones and the Wolverines. So let's send you live now. And here we are with Dick Stockton and Billy Packer. Dick? Michigan may go as far as center Roy Tarpley can take them. Explosive on offense and intimidating on defense. Tarpley is the catalyst that makes the Wolverines a prime contender to move on from the Midwest region here in Minneapolis. A final second shot in overtime and a never say die attitude has kept Iowa State in the tournament, setting up the first ever meeting between Iowa State's coach Johnny Orr and his former Michigan team. Johnny Orr may have something to prove today. It's Iowa State in Michigan. From the Metrodome in Minneapolis, welcome to the second round Midwest region battle between number seven seed Iowa State from the Big Eight and Michigan, the number two seed from the Big Ten. Here are the brackets in this half of the Midwest region. North Carolina State has advanced, beating Arkansas Little Rock in double overtime. They'll play the winner of Iowa State and Michigan. And hello again, everyone. I'm Dick Stockton. Iowa State and Michigan. Looks like opponents that haven't faced each other that much, and they haven't. But there is a story here, and it concerns the coaches. Johnny Orr, 10 years in Ann Arbor, led Michigan to the championship game in, in one year against Indiana and lost to Indiana. He was a great coach there, and his assistant was Bill Frieder. Frieder now is the head coach at Michigan. And Johnny Orr has moved on to Iowa State. And I don't know, Billy Packer, if it's because he didn't get enough respect at Michigan, but he's done wonders at Iowa State. What about this matchup of coaches today? I think it's really funny how fate comes into play in sports, Dick. Actually, Johnny Orr got a phone call as to who he would recommend for the Iowa State job. He said, Bill Frieder. They said, no, we can't use Frieder. We need a head coach. He said, well, what are you paying? When they said what they're paying, he said, hey, how about me? And that's how he ended up going out to Iowa State, and of course, it's done an incredible job since he got there. Michigan seems to have all the ingredients of a team that could go all the way. They do, Dick. They've got a great backcourt. They have terrific size. Of course, they've played an outstanding schedule. They've got the men in the middle that can rebound. The way they dominated Indiana a couple of weeks ago, they have to be one of the key teams in the whole race. Iowa State, not as big as strong, but they can run, and they're an exciting team. They are an exciting team, and in Jeff Grayer, they've got one of the most underrated, outstanding players in America. We'll get a chance to see him do his thing today. Will Johnny Orr win a big one today? Iowa State against favored Michigan here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's Iowa State and Michigan and a big crowd here in Minneapolis. Today's Midwest Region second round game is sponsored by Michelin. Michelin because so much is riding on your tires. National Car Rental, the official car rental company for NCAA championships. And by John Deere and your local John Deere dealer. Nick Stockton and Billy Packer here at the Metrodome, and let's take a closer look at these teams. Iowa State, as we said, seated number seven, but they have a losing road record, and they're seven and seven against teams in the tournament. They did beat Kansas, though, the team that lost only three games this year and the number one seed in the Midwest region. Meanwhile, the Michigan Wolverines have the kind of numbers, Billy Packer, that tell you they are headed for the Final Four. Well, they've played outstanding competition throughout the year, back-to-back uh, -back Big Ten championships, so it's a team of seasoned veterans that know how to play in the big games, and you can see teams in the NCAA tournament 11-3, and three, that's a great record. Michigan lost to Indiana for the national title in 76, and it was Johnny Orr on the left who had as his assistant Bill Frieder. Bill Frieder was a gym rat that wanted the job badly and finally got it, and right now we're going to have the introduction for the starting lineups. Public address announcer Bob Casey. Gentlemen, and once again, welcome to the Metrodome for this afternoon's Midwest Region two-round game between Iowa State and the Wolverines of the University of Michigan. Now, let's meet the starting lineups for Iowa State at forward, a 6'5 sophomore from Flint, Michigan. Number 44, Jeff Greer. For Michigan, at forward, a 6'6 senior from Florida, number 40, Richard Ralford. For Iowa State, at forward, a 6'4 senior from Chicago, number 11, Ron Virgil. 
for Michigan and forward, a 6'8 senior from Boston, Massachusetts, number 53, Butch Wade. For Iowa State at center, a 6'9 junior from Chicago, number 33, Sam Hill. For Michigan at center, a 6'11 senior from Detroit, number 42, Roy Tarpley. For Iowa State at guard, a 6'3 sophomore from Jackson, Mississippi, number three, Gary Tompkins. For Michigan at guard, a 6'5 junior from Detroit, number 11, Antoine Jaber. For Iowa State at guard, a 6'3 senior from LaGrange, Illinois, number 14, Jeff Honichick. For Michigan at guard, a 6'3 sophomore from Canton, Ohio, number 23, Gary Grant. And now introducing the head coaches from Iowa State in his second season, in his 21st season, Johnny Orr. And for Michigan in his sixth season, Bill Frieder. And you've met the teams and the coaches. Michigan 28 and four and Iowa State 21 and 10, ready to tangle before the big crowd here at the Metrodome in Minneapolis when we return. Midwest region second round. The big man from Michigan is the 6'11 senior Roy Tarpley, who was disciplined because he had missed meetings and did not start. In the first game against Akron, he appeared lost to many people. He did score 13 points, and he led the team with nine rebounds, but that was the first time that the usual five did not start for Bill Frieder this year for the Wolverines. He'll be jumping center against Sam Hill, 6'9 junior from Chicago. Set to go, Michigan in white, and Iowa State in the red. The officials are Rich Icor, Sonny Holmes, Larry Lumbo are underway here in Minneapolis. And it's controlled by the Wolverines. Joe Bear in the backcourt with Grant. Good combination back there, Billy. Excellent combination. The last time that Michigan was up here, Minneapolis didn't treat him so well. Minnesota put a hurting on him. Richard Relford. They get it inside to Tarpley. Back away. One of the best big men in the country, Roy Tarpley, 6'11". His quickness defies his size in many respects. 2-0 Michigan. Well, he plays like he's about 6'6". Six, six. There's that tough man-to-man -to -man defense that Michigan is really employing of late with Gary Grant setting the pace. Hornacek, number 14, he'll be handling the ball a lot. Ron Virgil, who's a forward and moves outside. Not a lot of size, as we said. Hill, the biggest at 6'9", number 33. Odd looking matchup. Partly caught on Virgil out here. Difference of... Uh, Tompkins hit seven inches. This is Hornacek on the other side as the ball taken away by Gary Grant, a fine defender. Michigan on the run again, and here's Richard Welford. Oh. Tarpley in the crowd. Looks like they recruited this team. Oh, good hands. Foul is good. Basket is good and a foul. And Roy Tarpley, and already it looks like the JVs are playing the varsity when you look on the court. Well, as far as the athletes out there on the court, Michigan really has them. They've got the size. They've got the power. Iowa State's extremely a uh, thin ball club with the exception of Grayer. Carpley's hands are excellent on the inside. Getting a hold of that loose ball for a big man. Reached right down there and picked it off. Foul is on Hill. A good free throw shooter is Carpley. And it is now Michigan 5, Iowa State nothing. Iowa State was runner up to Kansas in the Big 8. Last year they lost to Ohio State in the first round. They did they won their first game, and a foul is called against Grant. Gary Grant has the quick hands. Hornacek, of course, uh, outstanding guard. Walk-on player. Is that amazing? A kid can become that outstanding, a basketball player in the collegiate level in the Big 8, which is one of the top conferences in the country this year. Shows you that there are some who, uh, who get missed somewhere along the way. I would say they've been a fair player for Cornell. That's where he was thinking about going. He was an honor student. Ron Virgil taking a long-range shot, misses. Wade fighting inside. There's Sam Hill, loose ball. Grant has it for Michigan. Michigan has just about all the loose balls in the first minute and a half of this game. And Antoine Jobert, who came in with a lot of hype. Another Magic Johnson, they said. He has settled down a bit and played pretty good guard for the Wolverines. Jobert, number 11, third in scoring, second in assists. Grant, very intelligent player. Gary Grant has great hand quickness. Hand eye coordination, that's why he steals the ball so well, plays defense head to head so well. Grant looking inside, 15 on the shot clock. Ball's away. 
And a steal by Iowa State's Virgil inside the Tompkins with a stuff. Gary Tompkins, the point guard, and uh, Iowa State is on the board. It's 5-2, to two and they press. Gobert tried to get too cute on that drive, had an easy shot, tried to take it inside. Good job by Virgil and showed some strength, although he's a, just a wiry guy. Showed some strength to knock it out of Joe Bear's hands. Joe Bear's got, must have 50 pounds on him. Yeah, good screen there for the 10-foot jumper. Passed it up. Grant in the traffic. Finds Harpley with an easy pass. Good pick and roll there by Michigan. Seven points for Tarpley. All of Michigan's points by their 6'11 center. Grayer trying to set up inside. Going to post up on Ralph. Got speed on Ralph. Hornacek going in. Feeding inside the Sand Hill. Knocked away by... Michigan and Grant has it. Every time Iowa's gotten, Iowa State's gotten inside, someone has gotten a piece of the ball. Grant comes down with it, and is fouled. Virgil on a reach for Tompkins. Going to be on Tompkins on reaching in. Good penetration on Grant. You have to play heads up. He's so quick. Here we see Roy Tarpley. Does a good job holding the ground and not pushing off. Gets the good feet by Grant, lays it in. Sam Hill got the foul and it's a second on the center for Iowa State and here is Grant on the line for Michigan he's from Canton Ohio he's one of the rare jewels who combines scoring ability with outstanding defense second leading scorer for Bill Frieder and led them in playmaking one of the top freshmen in the country last year certainly to be of all-american caliber before he gets out of Michigan one out of two here's Hornacek bringing it across eight to two the score Michigan leading three minutes gone by opening hand. Dick Stockton and Billy Packer here in Minneapolis, upwards of 20,000. And a foul away from the ball against Michigan. Butch Wade. Butch Wade is first. Got to let a man cut through. Butch Wade put his shoulder right into Hornacek. Knocked him out of the way. Good call. So Hornacek will inbound. Iowa State administered one of the three defeats to Kansas this year. And it's the first time in history that five teams from the Big Eight made the NCAA tournament. Hornacek has a shot blocked by Grant. Loose ball. Look at Grant's quickness. Incredible. Grant comes up with it. Knocked away. Another one. He is not to be denied. And the foul is on Tompkins of Iowa State. And it looks like Michigan is too big, too quick, too fast, and too talented in the opening minute. I would have to agree, Dick. Is Grant incredible with that hand quickness? You would never want to play slap hands with this fella. Goes up. Good block. He reaches in, makes a steal. Ball on the ground. He actually dribbles his way through this one, then gets it stolen and picks it right back up again. He was drafted by the Milwaukee Brewers for a baseball career, it was Grant. 8-2 to two the score, 16-35 remaining in the first half. Michigan leading by six. Grant looking inside to Tarpley. Don't forget that Sam Hill, the center, already has two fouls. Tarpley, nice. Off the rim, Joe Bear comes down with it. And they're going to call a foul against Tarpley, Roy Tarpley of Michigan. Pushing off on Hill. Now, both of these fellas have been going after each other pretty well. Tarpley trying to get ground. Foul's called on Tarpley. He was looking for position. Might have been the best to have that a no call and talk to the two players on the way back down the court. So let's keep it clean inside. 18 to 2. Horn a second. Tompkins in the backcourt. Virgil is not very big at 6'4 forward. Comes out. And there's a long shot by Sam Hill showing his range. Third leading scorer on Iowa State. Joe Bear in the forecourt. Hornacek defending. Virgil traffic. Cyclones are a scrappy team. Great man to man. They've got a real edge on quickness, and that's what they're going to have to take advantage of. Switch that time on the play. This is the 11th time Iowa State's been in the NCAA tournament. They like that up-tempo style, but so does Michigan. Out to Grant. Nearly knocked away, and it is indeed. That's an odd pass for Grant to throw that cross court. Tompkins going in strong with the layup for Iowa State. And there's that quickness beating Michigan down the court, Dick. You know, you know what's interesting, Billy, is that Jeff Grayer touched the ball for only the first time when he intercepted that pass. And he's their big man. Their leading Good scorer. Move. Come back to Wade. Butch Wade from Boston. Second leading rebounder the last two years for Michigan, and it's 10 to 6 to Wolverines lead. You know, you mentioned that win by Iowa State over Kansas. Iowa State over Kansas, they beat in that same week, Oklahoma. Grayer from the corner. Tarpley just gets Virgil out of the way as if he were a fly and gets the rebound. Take Oklahoma and Kansas in the same seven day stretch. You've played two outstanding ball games. This team can play 21 and 10. They've won 20 games, Iowa State. For two years in a row, first year in the history. What a feed. Grant to Butch Wade. 
who gets all of his points inside and got two right there. Johnny Orr may have a matchup problem for Virgil. You can't find anybody for him to guard out there. He just doesn't have enough weight to play against Ray Wades and Relfords. Iowa State never really a basketball power until Johnny Orr got there. They've made their presence felt. Here's Hill, hit earlier from outside. Three white shirts underneath. Tarpley grabs the rebound. Michigan, the superior team by far, Dick, in terms of uh, physical presence on the court. Hey, Bill Frieder calls up, a, holds up a card saying clear. Yet they were an impressive and, and steal by Virgil. Grant throws away his second pass. Hopkins goes in and gets the layup. There's the quickness for Iowa State. They've got to rely on that. Those are two bad passes by Gary Grant. Very unusual for him. The distance between the receiver and the passer being so far that the quickness of Iowa State could pick it off. You know, Billy, Michigan not impressive in beating Akron 70 to 64. Tarpley, Miss Lawside, gets another chance and scores. They were not, they're out rebounded 34 to 28 by the Akron Zips, Michigan was. Hill trying to beat Tarpley down court. Good shot by Virgil. Ron Virgil from the corner. And Iowa State coming back, trailing now 14 to 10. We have 13.40 remaining in the first half. Relford from the corner. Not the kind of shot Michigan wants from Relford. They'd like him to be a little closer. Ray the rebound, and Virgil, called for traveling, collided with Grant. Again, you see Grant so quick out there on the floor. Tough turnover. He's the dribbler. Cause for walking. Grant right in the right place at the right time. Just about 13 and a half remaining in the first half. Iowa State trails by four. Early in our Midwest region second round action. And there's Sam Hill and a clarification on an earlier foul. And the Cyclones can breathe easy. Sam Hill was hit with a second foul. They've taken that away and given it to Gary Tompkins. So Hill now only has one foul. 6'9 junior from Chicago, the lone man inside defending against Michigan's big, strong club. And on one of the most controversial calls of the year in the Big 8 championship, Hill was the fellow that was called for walking as Iowa State had a chance to beat Kansas in the final. And there is Selener Tarpley, who lives in New York and flies to every game to watch her son play. She was a bit disappointed, naturally, in the Akron game when Tarpley was disciplined and did not start, but she looks like she's in fine fettle today. Grant freeing himself, throws up his shot. Wade battling inside and Hill the rebound into the hands of Grayer. Hornacek two on one. Jobert back nicely defensively. Open is Virgil. His jumper is good. 14 to 12, Michigan. Good looking shooter. Problem for Iowa State so far, they have not been able to get Grayer in the offense at all. Dick, you pointed out that the only time he touched the ball is when he intercepted it. There's a 2-2-1 full court press. Michigan hands it nicely. Grayer, one of the nation's underrated players, and he's really underrated in this game as far as his own teammates are concerned. Michigan has shut him off effectively. 12-49 remaining in the first half. Big Ten champions, 28-4 on the year, the most wins they've ever had. Pretty good tradition. Antoine Jobert hits from the corner. Jobert is a, really a forward guard. He goes down on that baseline. He's got the size and the bulk. I think the player that he was supposed to be coming out of high school is not who he really is. There's Grayer, second effort after Hill's miss. Everybody talked about Magic Johnson. I think, you know, everybody wants to be the next Magic Johnson, and you keep hearing about every high school player's Magic Johnson, but there is only one of those. Jobert, baseline, draws the foul. That's where he's tough, when he takes a guard down inside. He took Virgil there, who just about is a guard as far as size at 6'4". Virgil's listed at 6'4". It looks to me like he's closer to 6'2", and probably weighs about 165 pounds, and no match for Joe Bear, who's a solid 6'5 and a half, 6'6". And Although he's listed 220, he looks like he's more than that. So the judge is on the line, shooting two. They call Antoine Joubert. Third in scoring, second in assist. Some people say he's cocky. You've got to have some of that flair sometimes, but he certainly is poised as he was throughout his career. 75% free throw shooter. The guy that can go inside and penetrate. Halftime in the West Region. St. John's trailing Auburn, 44 to 32. In a big game, it's been tough for the Big East with Villanova and Georgetown losing yesterday. Everybody, and Syracuse losing today. Right, everybody out other than St. John's. Joe Bear defending against Hopkins. 
11.53 to go in the first half. Five-point lead for the Wolverines. Hornacek, smart player, dumps it off in the corner. Virgil hits another from the corner. Now, it's kind of interesting, just as you have a mismatch down on one end of the court, Virgil with his size problem. On the other end of the court, he has quickness, and uh, Michigan hasn't matched up very well with him when he steps outside. Half-court pressure, Michigan beats it. Grant, and it's tipped away by Hornacek into the hands of Wade. Oh! In the air, Virgil. He may be 6'4 and 165 pounds, but he's sneaking in there through the edges, isn't he? Downtown Hornacek. Jeff Hornacek. The walk-on. The gym rat. The honor student for Iowa State. And it's 17 Good to 16. Seal. And here's Hornacek back inside. And the foul is called against Antoine Jobert of Michigan. And Iowa State's quickness has paid off. Well, there's Roy Tartley putting the ball. That was a mental mistake. You don't want Tartley dribbling the ball at half court, even though he is a gifted athlete. Give it up to somebody that can move it down court against the press. Butch Wade has gone out of the ball game. And Robert Henderson, a 6'9 senior from Lansing, number 15, who started the Akron game with Tartley on the bench. He's had to adjust to his role of coming off the bench after starting 17 games last year. And Dick, we talking about those upsets. Uh, good pass on the inside to Hill. Sam Hill and Iowa State has taken the lead for the first time. Right off the man-to-man -man out of bounds defense by Michigan. An excellent cut by Hill and the crowd coming into the game. Six in a row by the Cyclones from the Big Eight. Under 11 minutes to go in the first half. Michigan had the fast start. Iowa State's come back and Grant rims it. Hill the rebound, out to Tompkins. Grayer filling the lane, and Virgil going inside against the big guys. And a foul is called, it'll be against Virgil. No place to go in there, he's up against superior size. And again, I think Iowa State's gotta figure out some way to get Grayer into their offense. Uh, outstanding player scoring almost 21 a game, hasn't really touched it. He had 25 against Kansas in the Big 8 Tournament Championship, 19 in the victory over Miami of Ohio in round one. Grayer, the 6'5", underrated player from Flint, and they're going to need him if they have any chance to win. Well, what happens sometimes, a fellow that's expected to be such a big part of your offense, if he doesn't touch it, then he starts taking bad shots when he does get a chance. He's got to nope. be very patient not to. Hornacek is out on Relford. Relford does a lot of the dirty work on that team, rebound, setting other people up, freeing others to score. Boy, Hill is a good defensive player. He's working against Tarpley, fighting for position. Tarpley's a lot stronger, but Hill really uses his feet well inside in the post defense. Ten minutes to go in the first half. Iowa State by one. Jobert pulls up against Virgil. And Virgil gets the rebound. Michigan is not getting any second shots, Billy. Well, I think the reason for that is that they're taking some bad shots. You know, they haven't gone inside to Tarpley, and let's give Hill the credit. Do he's keeping the ball away from him. They're blocking out, too, something you don't always see. Iowa State blocking out effectively on the defensive board. Here's a plate for Grayer to get him in the offense. Relford comes up to meet him to thwart that with nine and a half to play. Grayer playing outside now. 18-17 Iowa State, first lead of the game. Been this way for over a minute now. Grayer trying to get a screen. Grayer rims the hoop and Tarpley gets it out to Grant. Five rebounds now for Roy Tarpley, getting the ball back on a runner. Hornacek knocks it out to the corner. Oh, not Saves a it into the hands it. of Henderson. And a foul against Iowa State. You see if Hornacek has already ran right off the platform. That's the problem with the race court. Yeah. And he knew better than to throw that ball back in under the Michigan's basket. And I think that's what he was upset about as he went off the court. You'll see he's going to throw it behind his back. But if you're going to throw it, the best thing to do is to fire it down towards your basket, not the opponent's. Substitutions in the game. Iowa State and Michigan both bringing in new people. Guard Thompson, a junior from Grand Rapids at 6'1", who's been a key off the bench. Number 30 is in the ball game. David Moss, a 6'9", senior from Franklin Park, Illinois. And a big factor for Iowa State in upset victories over Kansas and Oklahoma has come in. And Hill has picked up his second personal foul. Henderson with one more. 9.07 on the clock. Iowa State's going to the bench again. Here's Elmer Robinson, who was drafted by the New York Yankees as a pitcher, freshman from LaGrange, Illinois, with fine athletic skill. Shoulders like that, he ought to be able to throw it 100 miles an hour. He replaces Virgil, who's played awfully well. Virgil has six points. 
He and Tompkins lead Iowa State. Robinson uh, explosives coming off the bench. Tarpley has nine to lead Michigan. Bill Frieder's Wolverines lead by one. Well, we talked about Sam Hill's defense on the post. You can't play it any better than this. Watch him move his feet, staying right with Tarpley, preventing him from getting the ball on every occasion. No matter where Tarpley goes, Hill's right there with him. When Tarpley steps out, instead of overextending himself, Hill comes out there and plays him for the jump shot. Super defense. And now he's going to be sitting down on the bench, trying to get a little rest. He has move. two fouls. Does well, Hill. And Dick, I'm sure that Johnny Orr is thinking, look, he's doing the job defensively. I'm going to have to play 40-minute game here. I've got to give him a little bit of a blow, and I'm in the ball game right now. 19-18 Michigan, and Grayer has not scored yet for Iowa State. Tried to go for the lob. Rice in there guarding him now, so he's up against the freshman. David Moss, 45, and a long-range shot by Hornacek is off the mark. And the rebound taken down by Glenn Rice, the freshman from Flint, Michigan. There's guard Thompson from the corner, missing. Henderson fights, and the foul is going to be called against Henderson of Michigan. Good job by Robertson on the blockout. Johnny Orr, an outstanding coach, and this team is fundamentally sound. Interesting about Glenn Rice, who's come in the ball game for Michigan, and that is that he nearly joined Jeff Grayer. He went to high school with at Iowa State, came very close to going to Ames. Well, one of the most highly recruited players in the country last year. And they're watching each other right now, Rice and Grayer, high school teammates. Rice doing a pretty good job on Grayer. 8.23 to go in the first half. One point lead for Michigan, 19 to 18. A fellow by the name of Barry Stevens went to that high school, too. Of course, that everybody knows, but Iowa State's leading scorer last year. And NBA draft choice for Denver. Moss oh. hits from outside. David Moss. He's come off the bench. He's only averaged three points, but he's had quality minutes this year for Iowa State. How and they've regained the lead. I mean, you know he's got to be a player, right? You know what he does in his spare time? He's a color commentator, broadcaster. Right? Oh, must have a good outside shot That's like right. all of them. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> 7.49 remaining in the first half. Thompson coming off the screen. Rice is looking inside to Henderson, but doing a fine job is Elmer Robinson. Elmer Robinson's picking up with Sam Hill left off, and so is Moss defensively. See how they step out at him. And a foul on Jobert, and that'll be his second personal foul. Excellent defensive technique on the step out. Every time there's a screen set, defensive man steps out, and Jobert got caught right here. You'll see Robinson step out, picks up Jobert, goes for the steal. Good play. And what Iowa State's doing there, they're stepping out and going back. It's not a switch, so... Uh, which is very tough technique to develop. The players are doing an excellent job for it on, for Iowa State. Ron Virgil comes back in the game, and Jeff Hornacek goes out. Johnny Orr doing a good job in making sure none of his stars get tired in this first half. Well, when you go up against a physical team, you can't afford to get yourself down to the point you wear out because then they just overpower you. So trying to keep teams fresh. He's rested Hill. He's rested Hornacek. Rayer may get a rest soon. Elmer Robinson... And the foul against Michigan. Well-executed play, and that may be Tarpley. It is his second personal foul. Two on the big Michigan center. Joe Bear goes out of the game, replaced by Gary Grant. Well, Gary Grant's coming back in. We're going to see the offensive move right here. Robinson coming across the lane. Moss sets a good screen on Henderson. What happens to Michigan when Grant's out of the game, Dick, is that they don't have defensive intensity. He's the one fellow on the team that can push it out, push the defense out, and really guard somebody. When he's out of the ball game, you can see that defense gets kind of soft. These are the first free throws attempted by Iowa State, and it comes with seven minutes and 11 seconds to go in the first half. Elmer Robinson misses the first. And Iowa State with a two-point lead now, 21-19. to Michigan has gone five and a half minutes without a basket here in this first half. They haven't gotten the ball to Tarpley in a long time. Guard Thompson and Grant the backcourt. Got Moss guarding him, playing behind him. Tarpley wants good job by Virgil, dropping back to help out. Tarpley with Moss in his face. Moss with a tremendous job. Henderson, Henderson follow up. But I'll tell you, Moss really defended Tarpley well on the baseline. Tie score, 21 all, our first tie of the afternoon. 6.39 on the clock, Grayer in the lane, draws the foul smartly. I think Iowa State might have been bewildered by Michigan's start, and they got a second win, and I think they feel now that they can play with this club. 
Well, they've played with Kansas. Kansas is the type of team, talented ball club like uh, Michigan with good size on the inside. So if they can play with Kansas, they can play with Michigan. Breyer is on the line. He's all also named to the all Big 8 defensive team. This Second year in a row for him to make all defensive team. When you tar start talking about a, a high score on your ball club, it also makes all conference defensively. You're talking about a great all-around player. Unselfish player. Can score and rebound. Gets the free throw to give Iowa State the two-point lead, even though Grayer is not connected from the field as of yet, with six and a half minutes to play in the first half. Iowa State picks up. They stay in that man-to-man -man defense. Play a little 2-2-1 full-court pressure and then drop back to man-to-man. -man. They go inside to Tarpley. Triple team. Foul. And that basket would have counted. Had it gone, Elmer Robinson is hit with the foul. For Iowa State, Michigan's already in the bonus. And Iowa State also in the bonus now. He knows Tar Tarpley with Moss. Moss not the same type of defensive player as is Hill. And you can see he gets caught in a position where Tarpley can handle it down inside and low. So here is Roy Tarpley, who was not highly recruited out of high school. Ten, nine points and five rebounds for Roy. 23 to 21, Iowa State. Michigan moved out to a six-point lead. You can see they play with no center, so the, the middle is wide open, everybody surrounding it, and then they get all those good cutters going. Excellent offense uh, for a team that's this quick. Moss setting a screen for Grayer. Grant is on Tompkins. Grayer, watch out from behind with Grant and a foul call. Grant very nearly got a piece of that from behind on Grayer, and they're going to call Henderson with the personal foul for Michigan. That's his second. Coming back in the game is Richard Relford and Butch Wade, the starting forwards for Michigan. Tompkins goes out, and Hornacek is back for Iowa State. Dick, what's so tough trying to guard Grayer is that he can step outside. He's got the perfect body that you have a hard time matching up with. Six foot five, extremely strong, real quick, can put the ball on the floor, so it's a tough matchup. I'm surprised at how well Virgil has done. You'd think he'd get lost 6'4 and slender like a reed in this crowd, but he's done pretty well at both ends. Obviously a very good shooter, knows when to take the shot. Smart ball player. So Grayer hits the free throws, and Iowa State has opened up a four-point lead. That's the biggest margin they've had. Under six minutes to go in the first half, and the red and gold cheers are emanating from the Metrodome. The people of the state of Iowa really support their team, don't they? Iowa was here earlier. Loose ball, and this could be an easy basket for Virgil. Michigan's got to think time out here. They've gotten away from their offense. 27 to 21. State is on a 15 to 4 run after Michigan had the early lead. Relford needs help. Henderson swings it to guard Thompson. You can see with Tarpley out of the ball game, this is not a very good offensive team that Michigan has on the floor. Gobert and Gobert and Tarpley out of there. Henderson on a good feed. Oh, did he in. get a roll? Huh? That was a good bounce pass by Guard Thompson. Now, Grant may be as good an offensive weapon as they have out there now. That's right. Henderson, a pretty good scorer, but, you know, if you're counting on him to be your main man, you're in trouble. 27-23, Iowa State leading, 440 remaining, as you see in the first half. Coming out of the top, Elmer Robinson misses. He's not shy. Loose ball out of bounds. It's going to be Michigan. Oh, Iowa State ball. Iowa State will have it. Tarpley and Jobert will come back in the game for Michigan. Bill Frieder trying to figure out how to get the Wolverines back ahead. The Iowa State Band is playing and leading over Michigan 27 to 23. St. John's and Auburn are battling in the second round in the West Region in Long Beach. And Auburn leads St. John's by 17 points. 57 to 40 in the second half. Well, Auburn athletes, and you know, we watched St. John's play the other night. It's been a five-man club. Marco Baldi no longer eligible to play for him, so they don't have that to go on the bench. And it looked like they were beat up in the ballgame. Walter Berry had that ankle, not making any excuses for them because Auburn is a team of good athletes. Not a deep team, St. John's. They've done it basically with five men. That's right. You play two games a week, and it's not too bad. You get in this tournament, you got to go night in, night out. Makes it very difficult for a team that doesn't have depth. Good pass. Inside, and it was Moss. 
David Moss with the basket. Tom Schaefer, a 6'7 junior from Chicago, is in the ball game, and both clubs going deep into their bench in the first half. 29-23, six-point lead again for Iowa State. Tarpley says no to Grant, looking for the feed inside. Grant misses, and Schaefer gets the rebound. Grant has had some of those games when he can't hit the jumper. Now, you can tell Johnny Orr has scouted Michigan down to a, just a science. He's playing off of Grant, double-teaming on Tarpley whenever Grant has the ball inside, and there's no passing lane there. You don't think this game means much to Johnny Orr, <laughs> do you? Well, he said the other day, it's just like another game. Yeah. makes no difference right. who I play, but he is one of the all-time great competitors, whether it be on the court or otherwise. You know, this guy was all Big Ten football player as a freshman, and, and honorable mention all Big Ten as a basketball player as a freshman. I didn't know that. At the University of Illinois until now. Tom then he went into service. Tom Schaefer hits the free throw, and back in the ball game is Glenn Rice for Michigan. There's Rice, the freshman from Flint, and Wade goes out of the game. Wade just picked up his second personal. And here is Schaefer, by the way, a transfer from Illinois, who scored 12 against Oklahoma last year. Misses the second free throw, and it's 30 to 23. Talking to Schaefer before the game was using a layup. He said, the last time I saw you were the MVP of a CBS regular season game. That he was coming off the bench. Michigan has scored only two field goals in the last eight and a half minutes. Iowa State's defense has been superlative. 3.45 remaining in the first half. And Jobert hits from the baseline. That's where they're most effective, it seems. The Hornacek was trying to help out a little bit. Jobert got lost down in the baseline. He's hiding down there. Iowa State by five. Iowa State has outscored Michigan on the fast break 10 to nothing, which is not really that surprising considering their quickness and style. And the foul is on Richard Relford, his first. There's a reach-in foul on the man that's not going to shoot the ball from 30 feet. Just a wasted foul. Iowa State out of Ames, Iowa. They went to the West Regional Final in 1944 and lost to Utah, Billy. You remember that game. In Kansas City, I'm, I'm, I'm saving that story to the game that, uh, or the night that we can really tell. That's about a half-hour story, half Dick. Well, we had a fill of 40 minutes the other night. That would have been a perfect time. <laughs> Elmer Robinson hit the free throw. And Gary Tompkins coming back. And if you couldn't tell it in the 40 minutes, you'll never be able to tell it. Chapter one, it involves Arnie Farron. Right. One of the great stories that's uh, ever going to come up. And we'll hold that for sure. Oh, we're going to hold it. I'm, I'm I know you're on the edge of my chair waiting for this. <laughs> Actually, I've already heard the story. <laughs> they were to make it into a soap opera. There's a tough thing to do. Robinson knowing he's going out of the game and just drills the foul shots. Johnny Orr appreciated. Grayer back in. Grayer is back in. Iowa State leading 32 to 25. Their biggest lead of the game. 320 remaining in the first half, and they've taken the play away totally from Michigan. We've been befuddled right now. Particularly when you take in consideration the way Michigan started this ball game, Dick. They looked like they were going to be awesome from the inside. Tarpley, nine early points, is fouled there by Moss of Iowa State. And Tarpley will go to the line. Moss has done well coming off the bench, as has Elmer Robinson. What Johnny Orr is doing to it, he's having an opportunity using Moss this early to save Hill. Now we see replay on the inside. You see, Moss doesn't get over the top the way Hill was doing that to prevent Tarpley from getting that easy pass. But Johnny Orr will probably, as long as he's got this lead, rest Hill, keep him out of foul trouble, and save him for that second half. Tarpley is in double figures with 10 points to lead Michigan. Virgil is the leading scorer for Iowa State with eight. And they have eight men already who have scored for the Cyclones. Grayer, their leading scorer, has only four. As you mentioned, Hill has had a big rest. Rice, second effort, Rice off the rim. And the rebound taken down by Schaefer. He's a bull. He belongs inside against Michigan. Good. His horn is sec, feeding Grayer with the basket for Iowa State. Boy, that was a smart play. Good passer and a good shooter. Jobert spinning his way in against Hornacek, comes back and the pace quickens. I'm sure Johnny Orr doesn't want it to get quite this quick. Inside, Grayer slowing it up now with 240, and you're absolutely right. Grayer knows how his coach feels, and they know he has a six-point lead. Why rush things and see it dissipate in a hurry? Grayer doesn't force anything for a big score. Hopkins with a screen from Moss. It was David Moss setting the pick outside. See, when you don't play with a, with a postman, that's going to be a charge coming up. Oh, the call the block on Moss. Foul is on Moss. Richie yeah, Relford. A second. Relford looking like a tight end going into the pack. Going to have to bring Hill back into the ball game. Sam Hill coming back in with two fouls, and Moss goes out. He's played very well. 
You know, it's funny when Michigan has had some of the strong teams in the 60s with Cassie Russell and Bill Button and Oliver Darden, they were also built the same way this Michigan team is. I would agree. The club that they took to the finals was probably, uh, that was the Johnny Orr team at that time, was probably a team a little bit uh, lean and mean. The club that uh, he took in 76 to Bobby Knight's. Indiana really had a little bit more powerful club. It was Bill Hubbard. A lot of quickness. Green in the backcourt. Kind of like this Iowa State makeup. Johnny Orr likes athletes with quickness. And he likes exciting basketball. The attendance figures have gone up too in Ames, Iowa. From 6,000 up to about 14,000. Hope he's getting a bonus on his contract. 2.10 to go. Tompkins working. 36 to 29, Iowa State. They have led most of the way after Michigan came out flying. You see this offense neutralize the and size. Oh, is that great oh. And the man you got to credit is Sam Hill for right. hitting the screen as he took Grant out of the play. Great screen. That Biggest lead now. That open offense really neutralizes Michigan's power inside. 143 to go in the first half, and nine-point lead. Tartley had a double pump, but he scores great anyway. Shot. 12 for Tartley. He's averaging 15 and a half on the year. That was a great shot, Dick, because Hill played good defense, had his hand up, and Tarpley just double pumped. You don't see many centers that can pull that off. Tarpley with 12. Henderson comes into the ball game. And going out is Richard Relford. Seven-point lead. Relford has scored one point, averaging nearly 12 a game for Michigan. There's the time remaining in the first half. Iowa State by seven. Johnny Orr has used his bench brilliantly. Good shot. Rayer made it. Banks it in over Rice. That was a bank shot. I don't believe he tried to bank that one. He thought he was drawing the foul on the play. It's interesting because Hill was right next to him setting a screen. He didn't go that way. One minute to go in the first half. Nine-point lead matching Iowa State's largest. Nearly lost it to Grant. Out of bounds. Iowa State, he did lose it. Michigan starting to put their heads down, walking back down court. Grant not having a good game offensively. Bill Frieder, the pupil, and the professor from Iowa State, Johnny Orr, trying to bring his team in with a lead in halftime. Nine points, trying to add to it right now. Good backdoor cut, wasn't there. Picked off, the pass was a little behind yep. the cutter. Jobert controlling with 35 seconds, and they can play for the last shot. Nine-point Iowa State lead. They can play for it, but Michigan really needs to score badly here. A good job by Iowa State staying back in there, and they'll take their chances. 18 seconds and running. Jobert and Grant. There's that step out again. It's really causing Michigan problems. They're looking for Tarpley, and the ball stripped away by Tompkins with eight seconds to go, and it's knocked away by Grant. Sam Hill to Grant. No basket. Get the foul by Rice before the play. And I got to credit Iowa State because they didn't rush. They knew they had eight seconds to go and they didn't throw up a bad shot. Well, I, Tompkins did a great thing. When he made that interception, the clock was right up ahead of him. He looked at the clock, realized his time, and Dick, you're absolutely correct. He didn't make the foolish play. Same way with Hill. Look, he goes up for the jumper here, has the presence to pass off to Grayer. Good job. Rice, second oh, foul. Oh, no, wait a minute. It can't be a two-shot foul. He passed the ball. That's right. It has to be one and one. Exactly. Because Hill was not shooting. Exactly. I can't believe Bill Freed is not up going crazy on that one. No, it cannot be. A, it can, can't be a two-shot foul. He passed the ball. Cannot be. Well, you're the only one, I think, well, that realizes Well, the referees are that. talking about it. I think they realize they made a little bit of a mistake. There. Too late now. Well, Bill Freed is not doing anything about it. It's too late now. He already took one shot. You can't say you're going to shoot again for one and one, right? <laughs> He's going Never to get too this. late to come up off your knees and go crazy. Yes! Didn't matter. They missed them both. 30, 40 to 31. One second ago, grand shot, no good. And that is the end of the first half with the score. Iowa State in a surprise. 40, Michigan 31. Johnny Orr is ahead of this one. at CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship. And Brent Musburger coming back. We'll continue after this message and a word from your local station. Nine at the half. And take a look at the top seed in the West, St. John's. Auburn has crawled all over them. 63 to 51. The truth buries scoreless in the second half.
Auburn has out-rebounded the Redmen from beginning to end. Full court-length pass and easy layups, and that's the way that game has gone since it began. North Carolina State in double overtime over Arkansas Little Rock, 80-66. to At the start of the first overtime, Arkansas Little Rock opened up a five-point lead, and that sent their head coach, Mike Newell, up clapping. But it was Bolton who had a jump shot to send the game into double overtime. And then Jim Balvano got a break. Ernie Myers pulled loose for his first field goal. And uh, Coach Balvano, who do you want next? I don't want to play Cleveland State. <laughs> that's the I don't want to play Arkansas Little Rock. Seed. That's a 14th seed. I don't like these guys there. either. <laughs> you said nobody with a hyphen. Nobody at all. Let me tell you, I split my pants the first game. I lost my jacket this game. I'm going to be naked by the time this tournament's over. <laughs> All right, you got to wait for Cleveland State, Jimmy. You could draw Iowa State the way they're playing right now, or Michigan if they come back. And, of course, that regional in the Midwest will be played down in Kansas City. Southeast, Kentucky over Western Kentucky, 71-64. Kenny Walker got the job done. 11 shots from the field and 11 field goals. A perfect afternoon for the Skywalker. Everything was bouncing the Wildcats' way. Roger Harden got the loose ball and got it over quickly behind his back, and it was Walker. I'm like a little kid at Christmas time when it's opening up a, a Christmas presents when I see those zone defenses and the guys just did a great job of getting the ball inside to me and I was fortunate enough to catch it low and then I was able to spin and just take it to the basket. Total of 32 rebounds, and, or I should say 32 points and 8 rebounds for Walker also. Alabama over Illinois, a buzzer beater, 58-56 the final, and so the southeast bracket there looks like this. For the third time this year, Kentucky and Alabama will play. Kentucky has swept them so far. A reminder now, Thursday night, we will have live coverage, and we will bring you North Carolina, Louisville at 9 Eastern time or LSU Georgia Tech. So we go to a regional semifinal on Thursday night and we will continue on the road to the Final Four in just a moment. in the East region, and it was a final of 75-69 over St. Joseph. The mouse that roared, Ken McFadden, he got the big hoops for the Vikings all game long against Coach Jim Boyle. Now watch here as Rob Crawford blocks, McFadden saves, Clinton Smith makes it showtime, and Cleveland State and Coach Kevin Mackey are going to the regionals. That's the best zone defense that we played against all year. But, hey, they wanted to go the Meadowlands. This is our opportunity. We're all Irish today. We just can't be scared at, at no one down the road. We just got to play hard and exemplify ourselves 100%. And waiting for them in the Meadowlands Navy, David Robinson, 35 points and eight block shots in that game. And, of course, that one will take place on Friday night at the Meadowlands, Cleveland State against Navy. Women's action today, Ohio State over Maryland. The final there was 87 to 71 now. Also in the Mideast, Tennessee over Iowa, 73 to 68 the final. And that bracket will have Georgia taking on Tennessee, and Ohio State will play the winner of the Middle Tennessee LSU game. Oklahoma over Vanderbilt, 86 to 67 was the final, and that action was in the Midwest region, so Oklahoma advances now. It'll be Texas against Vanderbilt. This one for you, of course, out west. It is 69-57 right now. Auburn still in command, and we could have another seed dropping by the wayside. Michigan fighting for its life. Second half coming up as we continue on the road to the Final Four in just a moment. And Billy Packer back at Minneapolis, where at halftime, and Iowa State has a surprising 40-31 to 31 lead over second-seeded Michigan in the Midwest region. One of the big stories, shooting. Iowa State, despite an early drought, has outshot Michigan 62% to 44, and points off turnovers. Iowa State has done the job. Their quickness has been effective, and I think, Billy, you have to be impressed by the all-round superb preparation and coaching job of Johnny Orr of Iowa State. I would agree. I think he has his team very well organized to play Michigan. He's being able to use the advantage he has which is quickness, and it's a tough matchup for Michigan because Iowa State doesn't have anybody playing in the post. They have everybody surrounding on the perimeter, and then those good cuts with good screens on the inside. Speaking of good screens and good cuts, we have an example of that right here, Bill. Well, here's Hill setting the screen for Hornacek, who goes around. Nobody picks up on the weak side for Michigan, catches them off, off guard. Tarpley had to go ahead for a switch, but Hill is doing so many good things, Dick, both offensively and defensively. If you're Michigan, what do you suggest? Well, first of all, you have a very difficult time pressing. 
because you've got a quickness factor that's uh, working against you. So I think if it's Michigan, you've got to get back to the power game inside, getting it to Tartley down low. All right, and CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. The round game is sponsored by today's Chevrolet who invite you to live the style, performance, and fun of Chevrolet in 86. Valvoline, because your car is special. And by Michelob Light, super premium taste and less filling beer. Back at the Metrodome in Minneapolis, the leading scorers in the game, Roy Tarpley is the overall top scorer with 12 points for Michigan. Three players at Iowa State have eight. Jeff Grayer, Ron Virgil, and Gary Tompkins. Keep in mind, Johnny Orr may know this, maybe he doesn't. Iowa State, when they've had the lead at halftime this year, have not lost 18-0 when they've been in front at halftime. Well, one of the reasons for that, I'm sure, Dick, is the fact that they're very difficult to press. They're very good with the ball. They don't throw it away. They've got guys out there that understand what they're supposed to do. You haven't seen them take any bad shots in that first half. They only turned the ball over five times. Thursday night, here's what's upcoming on CBS as we move into the regional semifinals. Game one, most of the country will see the matchup in Houston in the Western Regional between North Carolina and Louisville. Some of you will see LSU against Georgia Tech in Atlanta. That'll start at 9 o'clock Eastern time. Game two will be on 11.30 Eastern will be announced. Well, Dick, I said earlier today that Navy had been the top, the, the deepest seed to advance, but I forgot about the Paul. You know, they were 12th, but now just look at it. We've got Cleveland State, the 14th. The Paul was a 12th seed in the East, so Navy was a 7th seed in the East. I guess Syracuse has been the highest team to been knocked off. They're the only number two or one or two that's been knocked off so far. And uh, you've got Michigan State was a fifth seed. LSU was an 11th seed. In so the Southeast region alone in Atlanta, three out of the four teams will be from the Southeast Conference. That's right. That's right. With uh, Kentucky, LSU, and Alabama all advancing. Looks like the Atlantic Coast Conference has done very well looking at North Carolina, North Carolina State, and Georgia Tech as well as Duke seated number one. Well, they had six teams in the tournament to start off with, and five are still alive. So that's uh, quite a feat going into the regionals. It looks like the net was ripped. Going to have to have a little uh, repair job taking place. Michigan and St. John's appear to be in trouble at this point, uh, two of the big seeds. Kansas uh, moving along pretty well. Uh, they'll go against your guy, Scott Skiles, in Michigan State. Well, he continues to impress people every place he plays, Dick, and I don't want to get on some kind of bandwagon for him. He doesn't need me for support. If you look at his stats over the year, just take him a look at the Big Ten stats. He's the number one scorer in the league at 29 points a game. You go down here, he's the number five field goal percentage shooter, which is incredible for a guard to be up that high, 55%. Free throw percentage, number one at 88%. You get over here in regard to assists, he's the number two guy in the league in assists with 5.8 a game, and steals 1.6 a game. You just said you weren't going to get on the bandwagon. Well, you I mean, read every stat he had. And if anybody saw that, <laughs> highlight, that highlight of him yesterday, I mean, the kid does it in the big games. Any questions about Scott Skiles, see my partner, Billy Packer. That's right. Billy. Okay. Billy, of course, will be moving on next week and work with Brent Musburger in the regionals and uh, move all the way down to the final four in Dallas. The national champion will be crowned. Well, we may have Good it one. coming from right out of here. I, I, I thought Michigan was the team to beat. I really did in regard to the overall power and the way they looked in the Indiana game. It looks like they were really committed. That last game of the Big Ten season looked like they were really committed to take over. They struggled against Akron in game one, losing right here. And right now, while they fix the nets, let's send it back to New York and Brent Musburger. All right, Dick, you and Billy have been talking about the seeded teams being knocked off. Well, we're about to lose a number one seed. Two minutes to go in the St. John's game, and they are losing to Auburn, 77 to 61. So out of the top 16 seeds, this, the second round, we are about to lose half the field. St. John's would be the first of the top four seeded teams in the West to get knocked off. 
Now, already the East, of course, has been decimated. Duke, the only seeded team to come through there, and they will wind up in the regional in the Meadowlands. Now, of course, as Billy and Dick have told you, next Thursday night, the key game is Louisville and North Carolina. Most of you will be watching that game. The rest of you will watch LSU against Georgia Tech, 9 Eastern. Back now to Minneapolis, and here's Dick. We are back at the Metrodome, and we have a new net on the basket, although a lot of these kids, I'm sure, grew up without even having a net on the rim in tough, the early days. Tough to shoot without a net on the rim. You can always tell that neighborhoods that want their kids to have a good opportunity to learn to play, they keep the nets up there. Hornacek inbounds for Iowa State, second half underway, and a 40-31 to 31 lead. Iowa State with their biggest lead right now, nine points. Michigan led by six early in the game. Iowa State came back strong. Hornacek. Very smart player. Gray, I haven't seen anything but smart players out there for the cycle. Very patient. Everybody cuts. Everybody moves without the ball. Nobody's taking bad shots. Grayer, Virgil, Hill, Tompkins, and Hornacek, Billy. The worst thing you can do in basketball is take a bad shot. You, you know, your percentage goes way down. Your teammates don't know when to rebound. And there he is again, 5 Ron for Virgil. 5. Ron Virgil, 6'4", senior from Chicago. And... 42 to 31, big lead now, 11, largest for Iowa State. And Gobert trying to pull, post Virgil up inside. Elliott looking in, Hartley with 12, the leading scorer. Hill's done a good job defending against him, and so is David Moss coming off the bench. Relford out to Gobert. Ooh, good screen by Tarka. It's buried Virgil. Hartley and Hill is out to meet him in the man-to-man -man defense for the Cyclones. 11 on the shot clock. Hornacek is trying to front Grant inside. I check that. Steps. Relford and traveling call. Hornacek made that play inside, I think. Steps on Grant. Grant having a tough day mentally. He wanted to get it inside to Relford, and Hornacek quickly moved in front in front of him. Well, they jump out on that trap, does Iowa State, and they do it very effectively. Virgil looking inside. Instead goes around to Hornacek. Pick and roll. Nothing doing with Hill. Steal. Jobert. Iowa State gets back. Jobert. With a fake goes up. And it hit that. Relford. And they're going to call a hell ball. And it's going to be Michigan's possession. So, oh, the grayer looks like he's hurt. Be a tough blow for Iowa State. He doesn't want to put pressure on that foot. Jeff Grayer, and it looks like he's adjusting his shoe right now. He would I don't think his foot around. Yeah, he just doesn't want to. He just doesn't want to move on that foot. I'm surprised the, the position hadn't come out. We'll see the play coming up. Copley on the tip, just does miss it. Relford goes up, grabs a piece of it. At this point, you can see Grayer is all the way out of your picture. And now Grayer has to he's be helped off. Pain. This is a big tough blow for Iowa State. comes Grayer down. Let's see if we can catch up what happened to him. He stepped on somebody's sneak. Maybe his own man, Virgil. Yep. The Elmer Robinson, number 25, was coming for him. Robinson scored three points. All on free throws in the first half. 11-point lead for Iowa State. You see what Iowa State in that zone defense on the out-of-bounds, and they stay with it. 2-1-2 two, two with Hill in the middle. Interesting to see how they react without Grayer. Their leading scorer, Gilbert, hits outside. That's his spot. He loves to be down on the wing. Nine-point lead. Final score out in Long Beach, Auburn, with Chuck Person beating St. John's 81-65. to And the Big East is out of the picture in the national championship tournament. Well, they put three in the finals last year, and there'll be nobody there this year. Nobody even in the regional. That's the prize. Pick and roll. Virgil to Sam Hill. Nice play. He'll hit that jumper at the top of the key, the beginning of the ball game. Now goes inside. He's only a junior, and he owns Iowa State's career record in block shots, and he hasn't gotten a piece of one yet. Well, he's got 89 in his career, but his positioning is almost better than the guy that goes up and tries to swat things away. Away. 7-18 remaining. He and Tarpley fighting right now for position. Still trying to keep him out of his shooting range. Joe Bear with a baseline shot. Relford gets a second chance and scores for Michigan. No block out on Relford. 
First time Iowa State got caught in that kind of a position. Relford with three points. He's averaged nearly 12 and it's nine point game again. Iowa State in front. Grayer's putting his sneaker back on over on the sidelines. We'll see if he'll be able to come in. They certainly need his scoring. Hornacek looking for help. Grant is on him. Tremendous defensive player. Hornacek in trouble for the moment. Good catch by Hill. And Wade commits the foul. His third for Michigan. Boy, that was a fine play by Hill. No place at all for Hornacek to go with the ball. He threw it to Hill, and Hill made the good catch in traffic. This could have been a turnover. Instead, it turns out to be a foul against Michigan. Fine play. Tompkins will inbound. Hornacek had the presence of mind not to throw it away, and Hill got free enough in a crowd for the ball. And they're going to call a block on Grant. That's a Hornacek and Grant. What a duel that is over there. Huh? Smart player, great defender. Excellent duel. And what I like about Hornacek, he's not trying to force the action because Grant's the kind of guy that makes you try to play out of your rhythm. Brayer back in the ball game. And Robinson will go out for Iowa State. Brayer may have just stepped on a sneaker and twisted that ankle quickly. He looks all right now. Michigan has two team fouls with 16-41 remaining in the second half. Iowa State 18-0 after they've led at halftime, leading here 44-35. A very smart team. Cyclones have made very few mistakes today. Well, they certainly haven't made any mental mistakes. Occasionally you make one physically, but they really are well coached, well drilled. Only six turnovers. And that's for a running team is phenomenal. Virgil in traffic. Hornacek, long range. He's got it. That's just like the jumper that he made to win the game the other night. Hornacek. Balanced scoring for Iowa State. Virgil has 10, Grayer 8, Tompkins 8, Hill and Hornacek each with 6. A lot of people in the act for Iowa State so far. He's got good range on that jump shot, and he can shoot it without having to dribble. Nearly four minutes gone by in the second half. Again, an 11-point lead for Iowa State. Tarpley against Hill. Tarpley goes up and is fouled. And if it's on Hill, it'll be number three on Sam. It is. Three fouls on Hill, so now he's going to have to watch himself, and I wonder whether Orr may go to the bench. Well, you, now you can look back at the first half when Johnny Orr was able to keep him on the bench. Now, Hill's getting a little bit aggressive on Tarpley that far from the basket, and that's what enabled Tarpley to get that drop dribble on him. Pumps him up, gets him inside, Hill gets him over the back. And if you're Michigan, you want to get the ball back inside to Tarpley again and try to get the fourth foul on Hill. Make Johnny Orr go to that bench again. He's keeping Hill in the game with three and Tarpley on the line. It's great to have a big man that goes the line a lot that's an 80% free throw shooter. Leads in scoring, rebound, block shots, free throw percentage, 6'11". You'd have to rate him, of course, one of the top big men. Now, where would you rate him, actually, looking at the Bedfords and the Sallies? Well, I, I think Roy Tarpley's got to be the top. He's a senior. Coming out, he's stronger. I think he's ready to go now. There's a lead pass intercepted by Tarpley. Tompkins tried to get it to Virgil. Turnover only the seventh for Iowa State. Left hand. Tarpley in there. Tipped up. The Anvil Chorus, they used to call them when they had Button and Russell and Darden back in the 60s. They looked that way inside there. Uh-oh, Hill on his fourth. With the elbow, and now Johnny Orr has to go to his bench if it is indeed on Hill, and it is. And they're going to bring in David Moss. It was automatic. Moss already had his shirt off the minute <laughs> that they signaled the four. And there was Hill trying to fight for position. Here he is on Tarpley. Tarpley quite a bit stronger, and so Hill has to work so hard to get that spot. So Sam Hill goes to the bench. He has scored six points. He has four personal fouls, and there's David Moss, a senior at 6'9 from Illinois, who has played well off the bench today. Well, he has, particularly on the offensive end. Now, he doesn't position himself as well as... Uh, does Hill, so I think Tarpley's going to get open. Here he is right away. Tarpley over Moss, and there it is. Yep. Just as you said, Billy, now it's a seven-point lead. Pressure full court. Michigan, and a turnover. Tarpley inside the Henderson, and it'll be a foul against Iowa State. Now, that's the first time Michigan's been able to throw the press back the other way, and they did a good job with it. Here's where Gary Grant's quickness is just amazing. Look at him cover the floor. He'll come back on the loose ball. Tarpley picks it up. 
And by filling that lane, as Gary Grant did, cut off the passing lane that made it very difficult for Hornacek to find somebody to throw to. Hornacek commits the foul. Three team fouls against Iowa State, two for Michigan. Looping into Henderson. They trap Jobert. Good fake on Grayer. Fine play by Jobert. The fake on Grayer was the thing that made it happen. Michigan on a roll right now. Johnny Orr has got to settle his ball club down. Jobert with 11. Tarpley leads with 16. Pressure again. Moss trying to get it across. And, and it's nearly picked off by Tarpley, and here goes Verzel going in for the layup. You gamble, you miss, you get beat. Yeah, that was okay, though. That was a good move by Tarpley. You've got to make that move to pick that pass off. He missed it by a hair. 48-41, but at least you have the Cyclones thinking of that possibility. That was a big basket for Iowa State. 14 and a half to go, a reaching in foul against Hornacek again. Really Two on him. You have a problem when guards have to go down there with Joe Barry. Puts that butt on him, and it's hard to get around him. 14-33 remaining in the second half, and it's Iowa State, 48, Michigan, 41. <laughs> Iowa State led by nine at the half. They came out strong early, but Michigan playing smart basketball, and, of course, Sam Hill, the center for Iowa State, on the bench with four fouls, and Michigan making good use of some pressure full court. You know, Dick, you start thinking of what's left now in the tournament as we move on down. We've got... Big Ten with two of six left. Michigan and Michigan State at this point. ACC has five of six left. The Big Eight's got two of five left. Not bad. Not bad. Kansas Back. and, of course, Iowa State here. Metro lost two of their three. Big East all four of theirs. Grant controlling for Michigan. Zone defense. Guard Thompson, number 30, is coming to the ball game. Three guards are in there for Michigan with Henderson and Tarpley. So Wade and Relford are out of there right now. Boy, that was good defense that time. All over Jobert, plenty of time. Grant baseline shot. Tarpley is there, puts it on the floor and gets the basket. Roy Tarpley, 18 points. Michigan really making a run. Every basket Iowa State gets is uh, a real battle. Michigan getting some easy ones. And Grayer oh, goes in. What a basket. Play. Counted a foul. A three on one break and incredible quickness inside by Jeff Grayer, and that's one of the reasons why he's been underrated generally around the country. This fella 25.6 rebounds against Kansas. Good catch in traffic, concentrates right on up there, and Grayer just made a great defensive play before on Joe Bear, too. Tarpley he's now with three, game. three fouls. Tarpley with three. Well, I think Tarpley with three is a lot better situation for Bill yeah. Frieder than. Hill with four over there for Johnny Orr. Grayer makes the three-point play. Talked about his 25 against Kansas. Had 19 in the win over Miami of Ohio and pulled down 11 rebounds. Tarpley has fouled out of four games so far this year. But the way he plays defense, he ought to be able to protect himself the rest of the way. Eight-point lead for Iowa State. He's going to bring in Glenn Rice momentarily and give Tarpley a breather. Guard Thompson harassed by Virgil and the kick ball. Here comes Glenn Rice, the freshman from Flint. Very good score. He's had some outstanding games coming off the bench. Tarpley will stay in there. Guard Thompson goes out, so now Michigan will have a taller team in there with Henderson, Tarpley, and Rice. Well, that shows you the value of a, having a Joe Bear that can shift up into that forward spot when needed. Tarpley inside, fouled by Moss. Good, he got the ball in a great position. Not much you can do there when you get it down that low. Tarpley's really quick coming up off the floor. You know, this Michigan team only the ninth time in Big Ten history, and we're talking about going back to the beginning of time, it seems like it's such a great tradition that they have. Only the ninth team in history to win back-to-back -back titles in basketball. When you think of all the great dynasty-type clubs they've had. Indiana's, the Ohio State's. It's amazing. Ohio State, you figure. Well, back in the days of Lucas. Taylor had some great program. Had a great program in those days. 51 to 45. Fred Taylor's going into the Basketball Hall of Fame. Tarpley, 20 points and nine rebounds, playing with three fouls. Six-point lead, and now Iowa State has to prove that they can withstand this rally by Michigan. So Michigan really picking up their defensive intensity a lot now, too. But Iowa State kind of throws you off balance. So if you come out the pressure and they just pull it out a little further, which works into their hands because they're so much quicker. They've extended their defense here. Hornacek, trap, good ball fake. Gobert nearly got a piece of that ball. Hornacek, long range. Boy, he's got, he's got some range in that jumper. Harpley 
Grant is filling the lane. Jobert is going to take it all the way in, and he's called for the offensive foul. He had Grant wide open. He, he to the sure left. did. He could have made a much easier play by staying on the floor. So Jobert now with three. So Wade, Tarpley, and Jobert all with three fouls for Michigan. The one player with four in the game is on the bench, Sam Hill, Iowa State starting center. When you think about basketball over the last 15 years or so, it's the big thing that's changed is that ability to draw charges defensively. So many players do now. You just can't drive down that lane and be out of control. 12.35 to go, 51-45, Iowa State. Seventh seed against the second seed. Gray are trying to post up inside on Rice. Because they should know each other very well. Tarpley and a five-second violation called. It'll be Michigan ball, and Tarpley did quite a job on young Virgil. So he spreads out. He's got so much quickness, he spreads out. No place to pass the ball. I say young Virgil. They're both seniors. Virgil, sixth man up until this year, coming off the bench. He had 14 points against Miami of Ohio on 7 of 12 shooting, so he's played well in the tournament game. Michigan still making that run. Six-point lead for Iowa State. Guard Thompson out of the pack. Grant controlling. Watched by Gary Tompkins. Nearly 12 minutes to go. Tarpley, good pass back to Grant. Grant can't hit the jumper. Last touched by... Michigan, one official looked at the other for assurance, and it's going to be Cyclones ball, and Elmer Robinson returns in. Grant is 0 for 6 for well, the field Dick, today, you know, on that, on that last point, you, you just made it was a very good one. Tarpley threw the ball back out rapidly. Now, if you're going to hit the ball inside, and you realize your defender is not playing you, he's just backing up to, to help out on Tarpley, you should take steps in, so that when he throws the ball back out, you're shooting a 12-foot jump shot instead of a 15 or 16-foot shot. And that's what Grant's not doing. He's standing still. Moss loses the ball. It was a tough pass from him. Here's Michigan three on one going all the way in. Play. Basket will. Oh, oh, big play. And a foul. Grant, who hits his first basket of the ball game and a, couldn't come at a better time. Hornacek at the other end here. Here you see Grant going down. Hornacek, if he's not planted, I don't know what he is. I thought it was a charge. You know, sometimes guys get there in the last minute and act like they're planted, but I think he was there. Interesting. Uh, I watched Johnny Orr. He never looked out on the court, and I was wondering, what is he staring at? And I turn around the back behind my head, and there's a big screen here in the dome. So he's actually watching the replay there. He's been very mild on that bench today. Coaching from on the television or something? Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah I mean, he, he was just sitting there relaxing. I understand he's a little bit under the weather, so maybe not feeling too good. 51 to 48, and Michigan has come back to narrow Iowa State's lead to three. Five straight points by the Wolverines with 11.25 on the clock. Tompkins. Well, Gary Grant knows how to get around screens. Grayer in and out. And the foul against Michigan. Every time somebody sets a solid screen on Gary Grant, for some, he has the ability to turn his body and just get right over the top of the screen. Grayer's going to have to come to get some big baskets now, Dick. You know, he's been kind of solid, although his stats are building up. He really now has to get the ball in his hands more if Iowa State's going to win this game. Here is Jeff Grayer. This is the free throw. Foul was on Rice. Grayer, first miss of the game, is five for six now from the strike. It's only the second time in the history of Iowa State to have a team win back-to-back 20-game -back seasons. It's amazing. Johnny Orr, the man, in sixth year, took Michigan to the national championship tournament four times. Title game, losing to Indiana and Bobby Knight in 1976. Until last year, that's the only time two teams in the same conference have made it to the final. Grant misses outside. Guard Thompson looked like that he palmed the ball, but they called Oh, they're going to call it the other way. Looked like a palm, but they call Hornacek with a foul. Hornacek can't believe it, as Virgil will come back in the game. You see the play right here. Michigan with that power on the boards. Oh, that's what? a palm. Right? Well, I, I, you know what? I think the referee there had a better angle than we did, to be quite honest with you. And you can make good calls if you have the right angle. Hornacek goes out with his fourth personal foul. So two key members of the Cyclones, Hill and Hornacek, on the bench with four. Not a good sign for a team that's trying to hold off the Wolverines, leading by only four now. And when you look up there at 10-minute mark at about eight, Johnny Orr's got to figure about getting them both back in there because uh, the, 
Lead keeps whittling away. You've got to go with your prime time players. You cannot wait till you fall behind to bring them back in. Guard Thompson. Well, he's played some quality minutes for Michigan coming off that bench. The foul stories. Hill and Hornacek with four, a whole bunch of people with three, but that three doesn't look as imposing now with 10 minutes, nearly 11 remaining in this second half. Grayer, guarded by Rice. Tompkins. There's Grayer posted inside. Great move. Good move on Tompkins. Great move. On balance in the air. The only way he could have made that pass. He's a player. He's outstanding in the National Sports Festival this past summer. Larry Brown's team winning the gold medal there, and he was a member of it. Henderson. Nice move by Henderson. He's a scorer. Robert Henderson. You know, we talked about Iowa State taking advantage of fast break points and turnovers. As far as second chance points, offensive rebounds, Michigan has outscored Iowa State 18 to nothing. I think you're going to see Grayer want that ball more and more. He's got Rice on him. Here he comes off that same cut again. Robinson, Moss, Virgil with guard Thompson all over. Double team out to Robinson. The pace is slow. That's not to Iowa State's advantage. Thompson on a high pass. That foul, that foul, right. Good if it's call. Jobert, it'll be four on him. Let's check and see who got the call, though. Richie Relford coming back into the ball game. Bill Frieder's bench mighty deep. Jobert has his fourth personal foul. Iowa State lead cut to two. Two-point lead for Iowa State with plenty of time remaining. 9-36. Good play right here, Billy. Jeff Grayer, one of the best plays of the day. Fakes Tarpley up, goes baseline. He got to be strong and quick to go in there. Goes right by Rice, stays up in the air. Goes by, actually, three fellows, everybody on the baseline and sees weak side help. Doesn't bother him at all. Johnny Orr slowed by the flu. Doesn't seem to have his zip but as long as his players do. Iowa State led by 11, 46 to 35 with 16 minutes left. And now the lead has been cut to two. I had an opportunity in 76 to do both of those regular season games between Indiana and Michigan. And I remember during practice, Bobby Knight said, come over here, I want you to meet Johnny Orr, who I had already met. And he said, now you're talking to the coaches, the two coaches that have the two best teams in the country. And of course, that proved to be right. <laughs> they got to the final championship game. 54-52, Iowa State trying to maintain the lead. Robinson, don't forget, Hill and Hornacek with four fouls on the bench. Grayer has to be the key man now and pick up the load for Iowa State. Robinson up on top, big basket. Robinson shows a lot of guts. In the first half, he came in and put up the shots. Good skills, 13 points against Miami of Ohio in the round, first round victory, and it's a four-point lead for Iowa State, not giving Michigan a chance to tie it up on the possession. All big eight bench team. He showed why right there. Iowa State tightening up that defense a couple of notches. Tarpley quickly back to Jobert. Relford is open. They're going to let him get the ball. Tarpley push underneath by Robinson. That's exactly what it is. And Iowa State is in the bonus. Michigan has committed 16 fouls. That's what you like about Tarpley. He can step outside. He can put the ball on the floor, and then he can make the power moves inside. And as we said many times, outstanding free throw shooter. All Big Ten, top center in the league the past two years. All Big Ten team this year is Sellers from Ohio State. Norman, who played outstanding basketball for Illinois. Steve Alford and Skiles, that's a pretty good backcourt. And then Tarpley at the center spot. Gary Grant on the second team. And there he is, back in the game, and Jobert goes out. He's been playing with four personal fouls, and he scored 11 for Bill Frieder there. Short. Oh, Garth Thompson, big Garth play. Thompson, heady player, goes up. No goal, oh, they called no up. Moss. It wasn't called. And there is Tompkins going in, has his shot blocked by Tarpley, and they're going to call the foul against Iowa State. Oh, you talk about two big turnaround baskets there. Now, I don't know if it was goaltending or not. You'll see, Garth Thompson in a big play. It's up. 
And it's coming down, baby. <laughs> That's coming down. That's Ooh. goaltending if there ever was one. Way up there, and it started its descent. The foul is on Tompkins, his fourth personal foul. Make it his third personal foul for Tompkins. And that was not a makeup call going the other way either. No, it's too quick for that That's to right. happen. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Here is Relford on the line for Michigan. Relford has scored now four points in the game. He has been quiet. In fact, Relford and Wade really have been invisible. They have eight points total, and they have averaged 17 points together this year. Mitchie Relford uh, goes to the foul line over 100 times a game, shooting over 80%. He's the kind of guy you want out there. You know, Grant, who has averaged over 12, has only four points. Where's the scoring come from? Tarpley, 21. Jobert, 11. Henderson, 8. You talked about him before. Interesting now that Michigan's gone to the press. It seems that they've played better. It's picked them up. Got their feet moving a little bit defensively. The lead is one for Iowa State, 56-55. They did have an 11-point margin. Eight minutes, 10 seconds to go in the second half. Johnny Orr has to figure when he's going to bring back Hill and Hornacek from the bench. Rayer hits the shot. That's the man who's got to keep him afloat until he brings the other two back. He's looking for the shot. We're down now to the uh, below the eight-minute mark. Rayer has 16. He's hit his last five shots from the field. 7.45 on the clock. Three-point lead, Iowa State. And going up is Relford. Offensive foul against Richard Relford, the senior from Riviera Beach, Florida. Boy, you gotta have you have to have some guts to draw a charge on Relford. Moss getting up off the floor. You watch him step in here. Pow, does oh, he he'll get, get a hit? Pat on the back from Johnny Orr you needed, for that. Huh? You needed John Madden to describe that one, Dick. Yeah, he would have said boom, bam, yeah. or something like that, right? That was some contact, and no pads when you play here. No helmet, no face mask. Tom Schaefer comes in back in the game. He's been a banger, the transfer from Illinois. Junior from Chicago, and going out of the ball game is Elmer Robinson. I thought Johnny Orr would come back with Hill at this time. No, He's got Hornacek back in there, but Hill's still sitting on the bench. Well, Moss makes the first free throw. He's going to go as long as he can without... Bringing Hill back, he's got a chance for a three-point lead with 7.42 to go. And let's see whether Schaefer can hold the fourth down for a while. Michigan led early. Biggest lead was 12 to 6. Iowa State took over the lead, led by 9 at the half, 11 in this third period before Michigan came back to within one, but they haven't been able to get the lead back. There's Carpley. He's got Moss inside, just scoring at will. Moss I think it's time. Foul. I think it's time for Hill. 60 to 59, it's one point again. And now Johnny Orr is off of sitting down and up on the raised floor. And also getting up is Hill, I believe. Nope, it's Robinson again. Well, he's getting ready to talk to Hill. He's, he's got to come back yeah, to Hill. Hill now. All right, Hill has just gotten up. Nearly a steal by Grant Hornacek. Grayer, short. Rebound Virgil. The, to bring the it read. out, no hurry. <laughs> the read, the read, huh? Rare, trap. They're going to watch the trap in the corner. Good help by Henderson there. He realized he needed some help. Virgil, push off by Schaefer. Schaefer knocked Henderson into the band. No need for that. And now, now Johnny Orr is going to get Hill back into the ball game. Coming back with four fouls, Hill has six points in the game. And this is going to be the critical time of the game. Well, you can see Moss really not the position defensive player that Hill is, and Tarpley just getting it so easy on the inside. Good play by Tarpley. Question is, how long can Hill go in and play that tough defense without fouling out with a lot of time remaining, 647, while Iowa State holds to that slim lead? You know, another factor about the 45-second shot clock, when you're a team in foul trouble in the past, you had the lead, you could go into a delay, let some time get off the clock. You know, now you can no longer do that. You've got to keep playing. And I think on a college level, I mentioned this the other day, Dick, they ought to put in the rule that you can't foul out of a ball game. You have the right to stay in there with an extra penalty shot if a coach wants to do that. Henderson missed the front end of the one-and-one. Good screen by Hill. He just does it all right. Grant and Hornacek, what a terrific subplot in this game. Match up there. Virgil trapped with two, three people. Into Hill. Hill working against Hockley. And the foul is against Grant of will, Michigan. Will he pick your pocket? You know, I was thinking Hill has to watch out against the possible charge with Tarpley inside, too. 
Well, if he'll just keep setting screens, he doesn't have to worry about being aggressive offensively. Tarpley moving his feet good. And there was Grant just took it right out of his hand. Three fouls on Grant. And both teams are in the bonus. And Sam Hill on the line. He shot 57% from the field last year, only 44% this year. So he dropped in that department. Still giving him the good, solid performance defensively off the boards and blocking shots. Was it you who said who in Sam Hill is the center no, no, for that, Iowa State? That was some of your nonsense this morning. <laughs> Alfred, Relford comes back in for guard Thompson. You know, every time that, that Bill Frieder makes this move, he changes the complexion of his offensive and defensive alignment completely because Joe Bear then goes and swings back at the other position. Kind of like that boxer that can fight both right-handed and left-handed. There it is, the three-point lead again, 62 to 59, 622 on the clock. Johnny Orr would dearly love to knock off in the team he coached for 10 years, Michigan. Here's the zone. You see what he did? He went zone to try to protect Hill. And they're very aggressive in that zone. Joe Bear's the best outside shooting possibility well, here. Henderson, a pretty good shooter, and he won't mind taking a jump shot against the zone if Joe Bear can get it cross court. Joe Bear gets it inside to Tarpley, who's fouled. Oh, big call. A foul on Tarpley, and that's number four. And Hill was the man that drew the charge. That was one of those fouls like we saw yesterday with John Williams and William Bedford. Well, LSU and Memphis State. I wouldn't agree in this respect, Dick. I thought that was obviously a foul on Williams, but there was a case where Hill held his ground. Tarpley went into him. I mean, as far as a foul being critical going I, one way or another. I know what you mean, Dick. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> Timeout, and Michigan trails, and Tarpley has four fouls. Really, this is a game in which we've seen Iowa State play well throughout, and Michigan solid in the second half. They really have. I think they've played a much better basketball game in regard to the way they've constructed their offense, getting the ball inside to Tarpley, making Iowa State really work a lot harder to stop him. Iowa State just hasn't made many mistakes all game. They've been very solid. And shooting well, 65% for the Cyclones to only 47% for Michigan. Michigan shot 53% in their victory over Akron by only six points. When you're shooting 65% against Michigan, they've been holding opponents to 46%. You're all talking about 20% differential there shows you how good the shot selection has been for Iowa State Hornacek inbounds for the Cyclones with under six minutes remaining and a three-point lead for Iowa State winner will go on and play North Carolina State in Kansas City on Friday that man to man's pressed way on out there now, Hill, you can't afford to let him make a move. He's, you know, he's got his four fouls, but it might not be a bad idea if he can get it to make Tarpley have to do something with him. 16 on the shot clock. Gray are looking for some open spaces. Can't find it. Schaefer Hill's got there. Hill had Tarpley in position. Grayer hemmed in, finds Hornacek with six. He's good quick pass to Virgil. What a pass by Hornacek. I thought Hornacek was going to shoot, and I think a lot of people do. All right, it's a well-oiled machine out here. Just a great play, good teamwork. Virgil, 7 of 8 from the field for his 14 points, and it's now a 5-point lead, 64-59 for Iowa State in under 5 minutes to go. Hornacek, another one of those sons of a coach. That's a they good saved play. It. Gilbert saved it well to Grant. Grant penetrating, throws the ball away. Grant tried to make too big a play there, Dick. Pressure starting to mount. Everybody going towards the boards to rebound. Hill playing with four fouls, but doing a good job with four fouls. Defensively against Tarpley, Iowa State with the ball now. Grayer, Hornacek, and Virgil look like they're on the beam again. You know, Relford has done a fine job on Grayer, too, position defense. We're seeing some real good individual defensive efforts here. Five-point lead for Iowa State. Virgil. Out to Schaefer, 20 seconds on the clock. They're running that offense. Everybody's screening off Hill. Grayer. Not quite in balance. Hopley the rebound. I think Grayer always looks possibly to get fouled on that pump fake. That time, he, nobody was close enough. 4.05 on the clock, winding down to four minutes to go. The two, three zones giving Michigan some problems. Hopley inside, short, loose ball. Hopley again. Relford is inside. He'll score. Second chance points right there for Michigan. Just too much power in there with Relford, Henderson, and Tarpley. Three-point lead again. 64-61. 345 remaining in the game. 
at least the second half, we should say. We had double overtime in the opener. North Carolina State beat Arkansas Little Rock. What's interesting, too, if you watch that ball game and you said, well, no matter who wins this, they're going to beat that team. And that's the problem about the NCAA tournament. <laughs> Never know. You know, you watch somebody play, and then the next night they just play a different game. Great bounce pass, Hornacek, but Schaefer couldn't convert. Inside Anderson. the block shot, and it's still going to be Iowa State ball, but Michigan's defense was superb inside. Henderson, another one of those fellows that comes off the bench and gives a solid game. Michigan will want a timeout. They're going to bring back Glenn Rice and guard Thompson. And three minutes and 19 seconds remain in the second half. Iowa State with a three-point lead. Here's our story. Three minutes and 19 seconds remaining in the second half. 64 to 61, Iowa State leads. Timeouts. Iowa State has four left, and Michigan has two. Top scorers, Grayer, 16, and Virgil, 14 for the Cyclones. And Tarpley, the center for Michigan, has 23 points. The only other player in double figures for the Wolverines is Antoine Jobert with 11. And Dick, both teams in the bonus, and I start looking when it gets down this time of the game, who's got the free throw shooters? And Iowa State only shooting 65% as a team on the foul line, and Michigan way up there at 74%. So yeah, Grayer is only a 60% shooter. That's right. So, you know, everything's going to be critical the rest of the way here. Free throws may again play an important part, just as they did in the NC State game, and so many games that are played throughout the course of this tournament. Three minutes, 12 seconds to go. Horn a second grand. They've been dueling all day. Robinson. Robinson will put the shot up. Almost walk. Three minutes remaining in the second half, and a three-point Iowa State lead. You were talking a moment ago how Michigan just can't get in there, and a foul away from the basket against Michigan. That's Joe Bear. Now Joe He's Bear out of the is game. out of the ball game. A cheap foul on his part. He just didn't beat his man to the spot. You know, a moment ago he was looking for the foul himself. Exactly. He, uh, you know, he wasn't in the game mentally. Joe Bear goes out having scored 11 points with 2:56 to go. They lose a spark plug and a pretty good outside shooter. And they lose a guy that can create a shot when you get down the wire. He's done it many times throughout his career. Only 11 points today. Robinson on the line. We talked about free throw shooting, and here we go. He was three for four, but the ball comes right back down in his hands. It's knocked away by Rice. Michigan had a chance twice now to get it. Iowa State has it. New clock. 2.45 remaining. Now you notice how Iowa State has moved their offense out and a foul called. No, it's going to just be out of bounds. Out of bounds. See, it's hard to see up here because we're even with the court. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the first game, Dick, you like the fact that you're down here so you can see at shoe level and you can tell when somebody's walking. We can't have it both ways. But if anybody needs this angle to watch a basketball game, I'd like to know who it is. <laughs> 2.35 remaining, and it's 64-61. Key turnover. Tarpley and Grant, in essence, a two-man game right now. And it's that 2-1-2 zone. See Hill trying to front Tarpley. He's got to be real careful. He doesn't lean on too much. Guard Thompson misses. Crash the boards. Tarpley's there. Oh, Big yeah, basket yeah. from Michigan. That's why Tarpley's so valuable. 25 points for Tarpley, and it's 64-63. to Michigan is out-rebounded Iowa State 28-15 to in this game. Virgil not afraid to put it up. Grant gets the rebound, and the Wolverines are looking for their first lead since the first half of this game. 156 remaining. Jobert has fouled out of the ball game for Michigan. You know, guard Thompson isn't afraid to take the jumper. Rice will shoot the jumper. And maybe on you just get it inside. They'll or play volleyball off the That's glass. Right. Get it up inside, and Hill has to now not worry about that fifth foul. Not a lot of time left. At any time he goes up on the boards, he's got to go for it. Grant's going to shoot. There it is again. Hill, good rebound. He had good position yeah. on Tarpley. He's got to go for it. He can't worry about fouling out. 120 on the clock, and Iowa State wants a timeout. So they come awfully close, and Johnny Orr's Iowa State Cyclones avoided a deficit right there right here there's the inside position hill's got it on tartley comes up strong with two hands blocks him out good play
Iowa State clings to the lead, Billy, with a minute and 20 seconds, and they've gone almost four minutes without scoring, yet they're still in front. They're playing good, solid defense, and they've been patient with the ball, but they've got to get a basket from somebody, and you have to figure Grayer is due to take a one-on-one -on -one move. They've moved their offense out a lot higher, but Michigan has done a great job preventing them from getting an easy basket, rubbing off a hill in the middle. Hornacek will inbound, and ahead of the field is Robinson. What a play discussed by Johnny Orr in the huddle. 66 to 63, and coming right back There's is Carter. Richard Relford. Oh, a steal by Virgil. Here comes Robinson again, and a foul against Michigan. Big play on the out of bounds, and a big play underneath for Iowa State. Listen to him here. Just a miss up an assignment. This came very close to being a five second call because nobody was breaking. Michigan were well covered. And boom, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Robinson breaks to the basket. Timeout with a minute and four seconds remaining. Michigan has one timeout left. Iowa State has three. And right now, let's quickly go to Brent Musburger in New York. Brent. All right, Dick, thank you. Of the top 16 seeds, eight have been knocked out and a ninth is in jeopardy. Let me show you highlights now from the St. John's Auburn game. St. John's the top seed in the West. They started out badly today against Auburn and the ball just did not bounce their way. Mark Jackson losing it here right off his leg out of bounds. Chuck Person was the key for Auburn. 27 points and 16 rebounds. He had a monster game for Auburn, and the Southeastern Conference has now advanced four teams. They are 8-0 in this tournament. Let's send you back to Dick Stockton. Walter Berry. Thank you very much, Brent. Very hey, good point. You know, we start talking about conferences that were making a run. How about the SEC? Four teams still alive. Three of them in the Southeast. Listen to this crowd. Iowa State, red and gold. The biggest victory he's ever achieved. I'd have to agree with that. Twice named coach of the year. Robinson goes the line, 69% free throw shooter. Three for five today. Dick, I'll tell you something about this fellow. I wouldn't want to be facing him in the last of the night if he is a pitcher. He, he's got ice in his, I mean, you know, you can just tell he's a competitor. Freshman from LaGrange, Illinois. George, George Steinbrenner better give him a bonus if he can throw strikes because he's got the heart to play. Five-point lead with a minute to go. Minute away from a big upset here. Hartley goes in. Reverse layup, but there is Welford coming in with the basket on again the second chance point. Ahead of the field is Grayer. Tarpley is back as well. And now they'll use the clock. Good patience by Grayer. He could have tried to make that play all the way. Realize the clock is a big opponent for Michigan right now. 68 to 65. Iowa State is leading with 37 seconds and a foul on Grant. That could, and that's his fifth. He's out of the game. So the starting backcourt tandem and a good one of Grant and Gilbert of Michigan have fouled out of this one. He so, shot one for nine, Billy. Well, that was a big story in this ball game because Iowa State let him have the jump shot and he just couldn't bury it. That made it tougher on Tarpley. You know, people said this is going to be a wide-open NCAA tournament this year, but I think it's more wide-open than a lot of people figured with the likes of Navy and Cleveland State moving along and some of those Southeast Conference teams like LSU and Auburn, don't you think? I would agree. How often does the son of a coach not make the big free throw, huh? Hornacek. His dad coaches at the same school to produce Isaiah Thomas. Not a bad guy in NCAA Good. history. Oh, he comes one out of two. That was the first time Hornacek had been at the line today. 33 seconds remain. Lose it off the steal. Oh, he gets it to Hornacek in a while before. Michigan in serious trouble now. 27 seconds to go, and Iowa State can smell it. Hartley might have fouled out on that play, Dick. That is the end of Tarpley, so Michigan loses both ways there. Three starters have fouled out. Tarpley, Jobert, and Grant. And Roy Tarpley fouls out, having scored 25 points and picked off 14 rebounds. And it looks awfully good from the kids from Iowa State of the Big Eight, who was seated seventh coming into this Midwest room. I'm going back to that phone call from the athletic director to Johnny Orr. He said, uh, 
I think I'll take the job. Could you imagine that? What a set of circumstances. Sam Hill is on the line, and of course, Johnny Orr left Michigan. You know, there, you don't have the spotlight to yourself because of King football, Bo Schembechler, great school at Michigan has been athletically, and maybe Johnny Orr kind of felt he wasn't respected as much as he should have been. He is at Iowa State, that's for sure. He's banging that table over there now. He was talking all through that. He wants this game. 27 seconds to go. And Hill can give Iowa State a six-point lead. He does it. It's still 70 to 65, but time against Michigan right here. Oh, another turnover. Hornacek will try to save it. Wade has it to guard Thompson. Good going oh, yeah. in is Rutherford, and Iowa State was quick not to foul exactly. as Michigan calls its last timeout. 11 seconds to go. 11 seconds, a three-point lead. And Michigan is out of timeout. to 67 Iowa State leading and 11 seconds away from moving into the Midwest Regional Semifinals against North Carolina State Michigan seated second and a quick foul with 10 seconds to go and one and one there's the one and one foul coming over the top Wade coming over the top now Johnny Orr wanting a two shot foul but Wade was going to try to chop that ball away four fouls on Wade three Michigan starters Roy Tarpley who fouled out with 25 Antoine Jobert and Gary Grant the starting guards have all fouled out and the man who survived with four fouls for a long time Sam Hill is still in the game and on the line you know why he survived first of all he has good technique defensively and second his coach was very smart the way he handled him in the first half and didn't use him when he didn't need him Johnny Orr's got to be proud of the way he coached Iowa State today. I thought he did a great job in regard to game preparation, his style of play, his team is really well drilled, and his substitution pattern was excellent. Michigan has no more timeouts, and so they can just let the clock run down. Iowa State with 10 seconds to go. It looks good for the Cyclones. This game is over, 72 to 67. And another upset here. Guard Thompson misses. They're going to avoid the foul at any cost. Rice gets the basket. One second is over. And Johnny Orr of Iowa State has beaten Michigan. And how sweet it is. The final score, Iowa State 72 and Michigan 69. For Billy Packer, Nick Stockton saying so long from the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Right now, let's go to Brent Musburger. Brent? All right, Dick, thank you very much. The year of the upset in the NCAA tournament, nine of the top 16 seeds have now been knocked out. Sam Hill of Iowa State is the Chevy Most Valuable Player and Roy Tarpley for the Michigan Wolverines. And we will continue on the road to the Final Four here on CBS in just a moment. On Thursday night, the top seed Kentucky will be taking on Alabama. Alabama and Kentucky, of course, half of the SEC contingent still in the tournament. A third, LSU will take on the home team, Georgia Tech. Those two games will be played in the Omni. Then on Friday night here on CBS, in the East region, we'll be bringing you some coverage of the Duke-DePaul game. That's from the Meadowlands over in New Jersey. DePaul, one of the surprise teams in this tournament. And speaking of surprises, how about Cleveland State? They have advanced, and so too has the United States Naval Academy. The victory by Navy today, the most important and the biggest in the history of their basketball program. David Robinson with 35 points was magnificent, and now they have a chance to at least advance to a regional final, but they must stop the quickness of one Cleveland State. The other two games in the Midwest Regional, which will be played in Kansas City, so certainly the Kansas Jayhawks will have the home crowd advantage, but they're matched against a young man by the name of Scott Skiles. And now, with Michigan having been knocked out, it'll be Skiles and Michigan State, which will carry the banner for Detroit and the Motor State. It'll be Kansas against Michigan State. Can Kansas stop Scott Skiles? We'll see. The other game, well, a couple of teams that have advanced into the regional, North Carolina State and Iowa State, two coaches who have been to the Final Four. Jim Valvano three tournaments ago winning it with the Wolfpack, and, of course, Johnny Orr once took Michigan to the Final Four where he was beaten by Indiana. 
So, 16 top seeds, nine have been knocked out. Who will fall by the wayside next? We'll find out Thursday night starting at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. So long, everybody.